Welcome to the unboxing of Zalman CNPS 20X Air Cooler. The title on its box says that it's the world's best CPU cooler. I'm not sure about that yet, I'll have to test it first before I can come to any conclusions and say whether it's true or not. But what we should do first is to have a look what's inside the box. What's included are these five items, the heatsink, 240mm fans, components for attaching the heatsink to the motherboard, and the user's manual. Let's unpack them and see what's inside. This is how it looks after opening, I'll clear the empty boxes and put everything on the table. Before we begin, there is one thing I need to warn you about, and that is this heatsink. As you can see, I cut myself beautifully because the fins on it are very sharp. It's actually mentioned in the manual, second line, that you should wear gloves when manipulating with it. But isn't it kinda too late when you unpack everything and then you read the manual? Because that's the usual order of how you do things. So there should have been a note on top of everything, warn you, warning you about it. So now you've been warned by me and you won't cut yourself like I did. Let's begin with the most important thing and that is, as we know now, the manual because it's critically important for your health to read it. The next is PWM fan Y cable. It's a useful thing because it allows you to connect two fans into a single motherboard header. The same goes for LED Y cable. This one is addressable. LED Y cable extension. This is a specialty only for gigabyte motherboards. Eight standoffs. Four for Intel and four for AMD sockets. The smaller ones are for Intel 2066, 2011 and 2011 V3 sockets and the bigger ones are for AMD 1150X, AM3 and AM4 sockets. These are for standoff nuts and two fixing bolts. Washers, nuts and side caps. This is a thermal compound, ZM STC8. It looks like it could be a high quality one based on the specs which are on the box, which I'll show you right now. The only disadvantage is that there's only one and a half grams of it. Here are Two mounting bars for Intel sockets and two mounting bars for AMD sockets. These are loading blocks for Intel and AMD sockets. A backplate, heatsink, 140mm fan. This one has quite untraditional shape and it also has addressable LEDs on the other side. Under it there is this fan guide and close by are these two fan clips and four fan screws. The same is here. And that's it. Let's have a look at the dimensions of the heatsink, first without any fans. The depth is 14.3 centimeters. The width is 14 centimeters and the height the height is 16.5 centimeters including the tops of the heat pipes let's add in the fans the first thing we'll need to do is to attach the fan guides to the fans so let's do that Thank you. 
So the first one's ready. And now the second one. Now it's time to attach the fan clips to the fans, so let's do that. So the clips are ready. Now I'm not touching the heatsink without having gloves, so that's the first thing I'll do. And let's now try to attach them. So I'm just wondering how it works. Yeah. It attaches behind the first row of the fins. It doesn't look like it's absolutely ideal, but it should work. So let's see. Yeah. Yeah, so that's how you attach it. There isn't really too much space in between them, so I have to be careful. It looks like now it holds well. Let's measure the depth now with two fans included. And it's 17.3 centimeters. Now it's time to remove the fans and look at the heatsink. Let's have a look at the heatsink. The bottom part has no pre-applied thermal compound. That's a good thing because you'll use your own or the one which was included. There are six heat pipes on both sides leading into two towers which are made of stacked aluminum fins and copper fins in the middle. The manual says that it's pure copper and pure aluminum. The difference between this cooler and the Noctua NHD15 is that the spaces between individual fins are larger here. So I'll try and see, move it into the camera so that you can see better. There is also a wave shape to the fins and it's very sharp so you should really have gloves when you're holding it and other than that it looks like very similar design so now I'll bring the Nochua NHD15 and we'll see what's the difference so here is the Nochua NHD15 and we can compare it directly to this Zalman This is the height difference and also, as I mentioned before, the space between individual fins on the Zalman is a little bit bigger, so it probably allows for more airflow. The advantage of the Noctua is that there is this cutout for RAM clearance, so the Zalman may have some problems when you use higher memory sticks. Now let's look at them both from the other side. This is Almond's higher 
and now let's look at the length of these so this is 13 14 centimeters and the Noctua is 14.7 so the fins on the Noctua are longer but when it comes to the thickness Zalman is 5.4 centimeters and the Noctua is 5 centimeters so I'm guessing that the dissipation area of the Zalman is larger than the one at Noctua so that will probably be the difference now let's have a look at them from the bottom you can clearly see that these cutouts which are here are missing so I'll have to put it on the motherboard and see how difficult is it to install RAM modules under this cooler actually to my surprise you'll be able to fit these uh, G-Skill Trident Z Neo memory modules under this cooler there is enough space above the memory modules and the CPU isn't installed so it will be probably a millimeter or two higher let's now compare it to the Noctua so it's quite a difference now with the fans as you can see I cannot put it there because the fans are in the way so I'll try to put them higher to be able to accommodate the fans above the memory modules I had to raise them higher by repositioning the clips on the sides and now let's look how high they are from the motherboard it's 19.6 centimeters so make sure that if you want to use this solution you have enough space in your case to do that there is one thing I need to warn you about and that's forgetting to install the memory modules ahead of installing the heatsink if you do that you will only be able to change or install the RAM module in the first socket which is easy but anything else closer to the CPU socket will be impossible because the heatsink of the RAM module will be hitting the heatsink of the cooler so that's kind of a big deal because uh, if you have only two memory modules installed and later on you want to upgrade you also have to reinstall the heatsink on the CPU I have covered everything I could about this cooler in this video without running it if you want to know more about it I made another video where I'm comparing it to Noctua NHD 15 and testing its performance to find out whether it really is the best CPU cooler on the market thank you for watching and see you in another video